Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Destiny requires separation. That's how it is. We need to accept that. Hallelujah. Christ had to go so that the church of God can do the work of God. God had to separate the church of God in the early days because they had found comfort within themselves. So he sent trials and tribulation, and they were scattered. And the more they were scattered, the more they were preaching the gospel all over. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So scattering sometimes is not a bad thing. Amen. It's for influence. It's for destiny. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go into the word of God. I'm going to continue with my life because that's what God has asked me to do. So, amen. Um, with, with a lot of fear and trembling for me to stand here and talk about la my life. Not because I want to hide it because I'm not ashamed of who I am. I love me fully. Amen. Um, but because, and I'm not ashamed of my weakness. Amen. But it's because I want to make sure. I'm delivering what God wants me to deliver to the people of God. Amen? So when God gave me this vision of, he gave me a vision of me, a person came and asked me a question. And then I asked that person to go ask. There was a man, white, old, with a big beard, standing across. And uh, that person came and asked me a question. I said, go ask this man over there. And as this man was walking towards it, towards the man, I heard the voice of God who said, the answer is in your journey. The answer for this person is in your journey. And so that's why I'm standing here talking about my journey. Hallelujah. Um, last week we were blessed. It was powerful. God has done wonders in the life of our people. We have a young girl who was born again who was a Muslim who was coming in our church. She got born again by the Spirit of God. So that was her answer. Hallelujah. My journey brought her salvation and deliverance. Hallelujah. So God is faithful. And I know there was many more testimony. But it was God telling me, do not, do not hold back and talk about your story. Amen. So I'm praying that today somebody is going to have an answer. Hallelujah. Uh, today I'm going to talk about just five months or six months of my life when I got pregnant. As I spoke about it last Sunday, please, if you're not here, just listen to, to the audio or videos. That message is going all over the world. So if you haven't listened to it, please listen to it. Amen. I'm putting out there for the cause of Christ. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Amen? Amen. So when I got pregnant, like I was sharing yesterday, it wasn't something I welcomed with a, with a good heart. It was hard for me. And I considered to go and have an abortion, but I'm not going to go into it. So once I settled in my heart with God to keep this baby of mine, my walk with God started. At that point, I was not married with my husband. He had just got back to the Lord. He was on fire. And I was in a place where I was very alone, very fearful, and I felt like my life was over because I was 21. I just come to Canada with a lot of dreams. My parents had not sent me to have babies. My parents did not send me to go. Um, to go and be with some boyfriends. How do we have African parents here? <laughs> now everything has changed. But, you know, they sent me to come to study. Amen? And I came, I fell pregnant, but I had met the Lord at the same time. So this became a hard journey where I had to, to look at my life because for me, while well, my life was over, and being pregnant was the last thing I wanted in my life. So, and I remember my, my boyfriend then could not relate to me because I was like, yeah, you, you get to live your life. Nothing is ending. Me, everything about me is ending. 
You know what I'm saying? You cannot understand the pain I'm going through. As much as you can comfort me, you're going to go keep doing your thing. But me, all my life just got shifted. So I felt lonely. I felt very lonely. I had just arrived in this city of Calgary. Uh, and I had not many people. I was just going to school to learn English. And uh, so, so it became a journey for me of hardship to where I started, I had to run to something. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Where do you, who do you run to when things are hard? Who do you run to when you are suffering and struggling? I thank God for his grace and mercy. Every time now I'm looking back, I realize how my life journey is such a prophetic life for a Christian, a person who is human with faults and mistakes. But I thank God by his grace and mercy, I ran to God because there was no human I could run to. So I had two people I could talk to. I was too afraid to tell my mom I was pregnant. I was like, she's going to kill me. So I couldn't tell her. So I ran to God in my little bedroom by myself. Whenever my, my, my husband was in the living room, Shandalai, talking about changing the world, I was in my bedroom by myself, crying out to God. And today there was an invitation. Prophet Okema talked about it. He said, our father is calling today. He said, come, let reason together. And I feel it's the same invitation God is giving you through this message of mine today. Hallelujah. I want you to put Matthew 11, 28, 30. I remember in my little bedroom of that apartment downtown. At that point, my husband had just lost his job. So not only I was pregnant, we were poor. And I went to God, and I started talking to God. I said, God, I've never lacked food in my life until I got born again. My life was never trouble until I got to know you. So you see, as much as I was complaining, rebelling, I was complaining to him. Nowadays, when we do things wrong, the enemy wants to kick us away from God. God wants to tell you, come to me, all of you who are tired. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. God said today, let us reason together. You know, as much as I didn't know much about God, but I was able to pour out my heart to, my heart to him because I felt he was the cause of my misery. Hello, somebody. I don't want you to raise up your hand because, yeah, I want you to feel comfortable. How many people put the fault on God, but they are not willing to say it? Because religion, God is saying, aren't you tired of religion? Because religion doesn't want us to talk to God a certain way. God says today, I can handle it. I can handle your emotions. I can handle your struggle. I can handle the way you're going to talk to me. I'm big. I'm God. So God is saying, aren't you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. And you will recover your life. I thank God that I was placed in a place where I was by myself, lonely and crying. But even if I went to God to accuse him of destroying my life, he was okay with it. Because at that moment, in my little knowledge of who God was, that's the only explanation I could give to my life. He said, I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Let me work with you. Let me work on your emotions. Let me work on your perspective on how you see things. But if you cannot go, be with God and pour out your heart from the depths of your being. How can he work with you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. 
and you will learn to live freely and lightly. That's an invitation that God is saying. He said, you know what? I know, I know, I know you are a mess. You can pretend you're not a mess. You can stand here and give me back my word and preach back to me my word. But you are a mess. But God is inviting his people today. He said, get tired of religion. Let's talk heart to heart today. How do you feel about this situation? You're mad at me, don't you? Some of us won't even acknowledge. Some of us are, are, you know, offended at God. Am I talking to somebody? But God is saying, come. Give it to me. I can handle it like men do. Come on, bring it. Give it to me. I can handle it. So this is an invitation that God is giving to you today. He said, don't you, aren't you tired to play church, to play Christianity? To play a relationship that is not vulnerable and heart to heart? Hallelujah. So I'm so glad today that even my rebellion brought me close to God. My full expression of my heart brought me close to God. I realized those moments, although I was saying, God, you don't love me. What kind of God are you? How can you let a pregnant woman lack food? How can you, God? You are worried about your will. That's what I was telling God. But God said, keep coming. As long as you keep coming, I'll give you a real rest. Come, lay down the burden on me. I'm strong enough to handle it. Oh, God is speaking to somebody today. God saying, right now it's time to be real with me. God said, I can take it. I can take it. Because it's on those deep moments of struggle and suffering, you get to know this living God of yours. Then you pour out your heart, and then you know he won't hurt you. Because as the Bible says, my phone is making my okay. Where's my verse? Okay. One of my favorite verse. Psalm 1, 3, 13 to 14. The Bible says, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. The Bible says he knows your frame. He knows. He's mindful of how weak you are. He said he knows. He has compassion. So when you come to him and you you come with an open heart and you pour out your heart to this Father God and you start speaking heart to heart, God says, I know what you are made of. I have compassion on it. Therefore, he says, I'm a God who is full of mercy, slow in anger. There's nothing you bring to God that he will not understand. There is nothing. Today we're going to be done with religion. We're going to enter in that step where we say, God, the economy is crazy. I've been tithing all my life. How come I don't have a job, God? And I know the emotions inside would say, God, all these things I've done, you, you, you're afraid to tell him, but you, you, you feel it in your heart. God, I did everything right. How come? We don't say it. We come say, Jesus, we love you. But deep inside, we are not able to open our hearts fully to him. So God said, I have compassion on my children. Because I know what they are made of. I love David because David understood. He had a deep relationship with God. So at those moments where I'm crying and suffering, I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I'll take my Bible. And I will look something that looked like my feelings. Hallelujah. And I, found on, I fell on the books of Psalms, and they became my prayer to God. I started praying Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? I didn't know what else to pray. 
I needed to connect with something in the word of God. Hallelujah. Paul, David knew that in every, in every stage of his life, he could go to, uh, to God and open himself up without being afraid of this loving God. Today, we need to put fear of God. We need to put the, 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 the way we are afraid of him. David understood that this God loved him. And will say, how, will you, how long will you hide your face from me? Those were my prayer because I didn't know what else to pray. How long should I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all day? How long will my enemies be exalted over me? Psalm 22, 1, 2. My God, my God, you have forsaken me. Far from my deliverance are the words of my groanings. Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Psalm 74, 1. Oh God, why have you rejected me forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? So I would pray the books of Psalms because that was the only thing in this whole Bible I could connect with. But through that, I wasn't running away from God. I was running to God. I was running to his word. And today, this is a charge I'm giving you today. It's no time when you mess up that you run away from God. It's time that you run to God. Run to God with your brokenness. Run to God with your anger. Because as a father has love for his children, so God has mercy and compassion on his children. But he, because he understands what they are made of. Am I talking to somebody today? I'm so grateful to God because all these things brought me close to him. In your pain, you get close to God when you know what to run to. In your sorrow, you know where, how to get out of it when you know how to, where to run to. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 86, 15, but you, O oh Lord, you are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Listen to me. I don't care who you, who you killed yesterday. God's compassion never runs out. God's compassion never runs out. As long as... I, I, you know, I don't care how you feel today that God has left me. God has forsaken me. He doesn't love me because what I have done, because of things I'm doing. This is a life from the pit of hell. Because God is always giving an invitation to his children. Just come. Let reason together. I don't want to talk. There's times where God says, I don't want you to worship me. I want you to talk to me. Talk to me as a father speaks to his children. I thank God that I had good parents because my dad would let me talk to him the way I felt. So it was easy for me to go to God. But many of you were not able to have a good relationship with your father. So which blocking the way you relate to your God. You see him as a big angry God or a God who just want his way done a certain way. God said, no, 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 come to me. Come to me, all of you. Come and speak and let's reason together. And your opinion matters, even if it's wrong. Are you hearing me today? Your opinion matters to God, even if it's wrong. Because God is not after making robbers. God is after reasoning with his people. In good times, in bad times. In ugly times, in rebellious times. This is the kind of God that we serve, a loving and faithful God who understands your lack of wisdom and understanding of who he is, but he's willing to work and walk with us. Are you ready to have this God kind of relationship 
where you are at peace and at home with your Jesus. That you know even if you mess up, he is okay with it. Just keep coming back to him. A church is not a church for holy people in the sense you have to be perfect. A church is for people who are broken, angry, mad, crazy, who do stupid things. A church is for those people to keep coming to God, to hear his word, to keep having that invitation with the mighty God. Men may judge you for your weakness or your failings. But there is a God in heaven. He said, I have compassion on you and I understand your weakness. I know that because I have experienced it. I know that because there was no thunder that came on me when I said you are mean God to him. Do you understand? Because I was pouring out my heart to this God that I didn't know, but I was willing to walk with him through every process of my life. Amen. Amen. Today I want to invite you. I want to invite you because the enemy always makes people run away from God. God is not pleased with you. God is mad at you. Then instead of running to your father, you run away from your father. There's no way God can save a sinner like me. I messed up. Yes, you're going to mess up and you're going to keep messing up. But there is a grace and compassion always waiting on you to come back home. Come back home to Jesus. God knows apart from him, you can do nothing. He says, apart from me, you are just a miserable human being who has no capacity to save yourselves. So we come and we connect ourselves to the grace of God. Hallelujah. So I had my God that I talked to. I had my baby, unfortunately, that I heard from the womb. I heard with my words because I was wounded. But that's for another day because God in his mercy has restored that. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is faithful. I remember one day I was so pregnant. I was craving ugali. And I didn't have money. You know what I did? I went and buy white flour. Imagine. I went white flour. And I made ugali with white flour. And I said, God... Even back home, villages, even those who don't have parents who work, they are able to make ugali from the real flour. And I said, how can you allow this to happen to me? But God was okay with it. Because he was looking for a relationship with, with his daughter that he loved, even if she didn't know. But at that moment, I had to tell my God how I thought about him, what I thought he was. I mean, God who cares only for his purpose and his destiny to happen, doesn't care about people's feelings. Was it was something I felt in my emotion. Was it true? No. But God was okay with that. Because God understands our times and our season. Am I talking to somebody? Psalm 119.28 says, I weep with sorrow, encourage me by your word. Listen to me. Weeping is part of this life, but his word will encourage you. His word will strengthen you. Little did I know as I'm crying to God, he was encouraging me. As I was reading this Bible, I was becoming strong in my spirit. And I started believing this God. Even if my situation had not changed, I started believing without knowing. You know why? Because the word of God was coming in my spirit. What you feed on, that's what's going to give you life. Are you hearing me today? And I became strong and I became stronger. I remember one day I said, God, we can't even have milk. I said, even in my own father's house, I never lacked milk. <laughs> and I couldn't tell no one what we were going through. Who am I going to tell? My mom? My father? She'll say, come back home. A 
Let's go to Hebrew. Hebrew 2.10. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. He's from the pit of hell. And I promised him, I'm going to make your life miserable. I'm going to preach the gospel to make you ah, for everything you've ever done to me. Hebrews 2, 10, 13. The Bible says it makes good sense that the God who got everything started and keeps everything going now completes the work by making the salvation pioneer perfect through suffering as he leads all these people to glory. For God to perfect his plan, Christ had to go through suffering. Amen? Amen. Since the one who saves and those who are saved have a common origin, Jesus does not hesitate to treat them as family. That's how God, Jesus, treats you as family. Amen. Saying, I'll tell my good friends, my brothers and my sister, all I know about you, God. I'll join them in worship and praise to you. Again, he puts himself in the same family circle. When he says, if, even I live by placing my trust in God, and yet again I'm here with the children that God gave me. Listen to me. God has perfected the work of Christ by putting him through the suffering so that there was no judgment when it came to you and your God. He had perfected it, yet we judge ourselves, we judge others, and we think God is judging us a certain way. God is not judging us because he has put his judgment upon Christ to perfect the work so that you can come back into the family of God. Amen. It's important. That's number one. Number two, Hebrew 4, 14, 16. So then we must cling in faith to all we know to be true. For we have a magnificent king priest, Jesus Christ, the son of God who rose into the heavenly realm for us. And now sympathizes with us in our frailty. Do you understand? He sympathizes with us because he's gone through it. He knows what it is when we go through hardships. He understands our emotion as human because he became a human to get into our own skin to understand what we go through. The Bible says he sympathizes with you, with your weakness. He sympathizes with you, with your shortcoming. Are you here today? Today, you need to understand that when you fall short from the glory of God, I don't care what sin you commit, that God doesn't look at you with judgment. He has compassion because he understands, because he's been there. He's been there. The devil is a liar. It says he understands humanity. For as a man, our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are. And he conquered that sin. Are you hearing me today? Today I want you to be free to be human. And allow the magnificent king Jesus to come into your story and walk with you. I told God, I need to preach one day, you know, between discipline and sanctification and transformation. Because as Christians, we have stepped into discipline. But God said, I want transformation. And transformation does not come from you. It comes from him. We are not called to work hard to earn the love of God, to work hard to change. I'm going to discipline myself not to lie. I'm going to discipline myself not to steal. I'm going to discipline myself not to be angry at my wife and children. God said, you can discipline all you want. One day you'll fall short. But God said, transformation is from me. It comes from me. Amen. Hallelujah. God said, come out of discipline and performance and let's work together into transforming. Amen. 
But you cannot do that until you know you are human. Hallelujah. You cannot do that when you start putting your makeup, Holy Ghost makeup on. Oh, Jesus. When you're done doing this, you're going to go home. And your children will go crazy on you. That, ha, ha, I don't know. It's going to turn into something else. Yeah. <laughs> Some people didn't get it. Hallelujah. <laughs> that Holy Ghost, it turned into a spirit of anger. You're like, hey, yeah. night and day, what happened? Right. Discipline. We want transformation. Hallelujah. Yeah. But there can't be any transformation until you understand your humanity. That you are frail, you are weak, and without Savior, there's no hope for you. So stop laughing at people who are still struggling. Come on, stop it, stop it, stop it. He said, he, he understands humanity, for as a man, our magnificent king priest, was tempted in every way, just as we are, and conquered sin. So now we come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do we run away from love? How about we enter where love is enthroned? To receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace, we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. Am I talking to somebody today? Is somebody listening today? I love my God because he's a, time of, he's a God of times and season. He understands there's times in every human being where you must mourn, where you must cry, where you must weep, where you must grieve, where you must dance. He understands there's a time he said, for everything, there's an, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. Don't pretend that you got the, that thing happening perfectly for your life. God said, under the heaven, there's time for everything. So God expects all these things upon our lives. There's a time to search, a time to quit searching. And God understood I had to weep and mourn my past, what could have been. He understood I had to go through my humanity and cry for the disappointment and the struggles I was going through. There was a time for me. And as a loving God, every time I enter in the throne room of grace and mercy, he would strengthen me. And you know what he would do? He never told me, don't cry. He kept showing me, this is what I have for you. And I'm like, I don't care for what you have for me. What's going on right now? He will show me how I will touch millions for the gospel. And I'll say, I don't care for that. I'm caring for now, for my school, for my parents, and everything that's happening. Because he understood there's time and season where as a human being you have to go through certain emotions. So don't try to be a robot, a robot Christian, pretending Holy Ghost is all over me. I cannot be this. I have to be a certain way. That's the devil right there. And then after you explode, we can't even find you because you have tried to be something you're not. Enter into the room of grace and mercy and receive heaven's kiss and receive the strengthening of the Holy Ghost until it transforms you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you get it? Yes. Jesus. I feel, I, I feel like I'm, oh, 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 devil, he's such a liar. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, what was tears for me has become a weapon in my hands to bring deliverance and salvation to the people of God. There is power in your pain. There's a story behind that. God is so powerful. God is so powerful. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your way, your path straight. 
He said, do not lean on your own understanding because your understanding is affected by times and seasons, circumstances you go through. But he says, lean into God, into my word, and I'm going to make your path very straight. That's why I never make a decision where you're not in a good place emotionally. Hallelujah. We're going to finish, stand up in the presence of God. We're going to pray. But God is saying, come to me, come to me. I'm a God of compassion. I want to reason with you in everything of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. But we, before I do, I'm going to pray. I'm going to say 1 Peter 5, 10 for somebody going through a lot of things. The Bible says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. He will. He is faithful. He is faithful in all his ways. Perfect in all his ways. And then when I had the courage at five months, I called my mom. I said, God, she's going to kill me. And we talked and I said, Mom, I'm pregnant. She just asked me a question. She said, how's Diallo taking it? I said, he's okay with it. And he said, I'm happy for you, my daughter. She had just worried for me. She wanted to make sure. I'm not suffering because of my prayers. That's why I'm talking to you parents today. If you don't build a bridge with your children in hard times, they will come to you. If you always come to them in judgment, there comes a time where they will not come to you. And that's when they need you the most. And you today, you can go home and say, you know, you can ask your children, you know, you can tell me anything, you know, right? They'll say, yes, mom. But they remember the judgment when you do something wrong. And then when they are in their hardships, they will run to something else or somebody else. May God give us the grace. Hallelujah. We're going to pray that God turn our hearts around. That we do not make it about ourselves, parents, about our image, about what people are going to think. Because when I was pregnant, I was thinking like that. I'm bringing shame to my family. So when your children come to you, don't think for you. Because it takes courage for a child to come to parents that they love and respect, to dare open their heart. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me, parents? Yeah. I heard a story of a young woman who got pregnant. And she said, the only reason I, I had abortion, I wanted to keep that baby. The only reason I had abortion, I was afraid of my dad. Can you believe that? I was afraid of the shame I was bringing to my family. So you see, parent, we have a big responsibility to minister life and love to our, parents, our children. That's why we need to allow God's compassion to come into us so that when it comes to us, our hearts or judgment is being melted away. We come that God would accept us fully so that when our children come, they, you will accept them fully. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me today? Yes. That's why I tell you people of God, parents, you, you who come to church because you feel like it, you got to do it for your children sometimes. Because the word of God needs to be engraved in them from the early age. So that they'll have a compass. Because when times are tough, they will not run to their parents. But when the word of God is there, 
when the stability of the word of God is there, they will always find themselves their way out. Amen? Amen? I saw it in my life. The only reason I'm standing here, I just learned to run to my God. That I not, did not understand, but I run to him in the, in, the, in the openness of my heart. And he had full compassion on me because he understood me. So today, I want to come into the throne room of grace. To receive heaven's kiss, knowing God is not judging you. But this is an invitation of the Father to come, come, and let reason together. Let's talk, let's, talk, let's sit. Make me your living room. Make me home. Be home with me. Now when I run, I run to Jesus. I don't care how he sees me. I'm like, God, that's who I am. That's, it's your fault. You made me this way. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, I understand that. Let Jesus be home for you. Yeah. Let this great, compassionate God be the source of everything for you. God said, throw away religion. And let's enter into that place. Because anyway, a part of me, of me, you can do nothing. All this decision you think you're making, if it wasn't by my hands and mercy and grace, you wouldn't be able to do it. So God is inviting the people of God. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. He's inviting the church of God to come closer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, I, I want you to be home with me. Home is a place where you are free. You can throw your shoes everywhere. Hallelujah. Home is a place where even if the house is dirty, it's okay. It's your home. Home is where, where you can cry in peace and security. And that is in Jesus and Jesus alone. It's not in your husband. It's not in your wife, in your children. Only in Jesus you can find that home and rest in him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you guys to enter that place of rest where there's no guilt or condemnation, where you don't have to work hard. You think you have to deserve something from God. You understand, my sister? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't need to work hard with Jesus. Amen. God said, be home with me. I'm a full of compassion, mercy, and grace. Jesus has made a way. I'm going to ask people to come. I'm going, we're going to pray for them. If you are in this place, you have run away from Jesus. Your sins have made you run away from Jesus. Or you have not given your heart to Christ today. We're going to confess Jesus. I want to come back home. Come back home to a place of safety. And if you are here, the struggles have been too much. And you're like, God, you don't love me anymore. You have forsaken me. God said, it's okay to say that. But keep coming home. Things will be clear for your life. And the, at the right time, I will establish you. I will, I'm strengthening you. That's what Jesus says. Jesus is not about kicking people out. That's what humans do. God is a God who embraces people at every level, at every age, at every stage of their life. God is into a relationship based of truth, clarity between him and his people. So today, did you hear the call, the invitation of the master to say, come home? And be at home with me. I'm going to ask Jada to come here to sing. Um, no longer slave to sin. Hallelujah. God has adopted you and me. Into his home. Full of compassion, slow to anger. Is there any sin in your life 
that's separating you from God. Today you have an opportunity to say, God, forgive me. Take me home with you. I want you to repeat after me, Jesus. I want to come home. I want to be home with you. I want to be home with you. Say, Jesus, I want to be naked with you. I want to stay human with you. And I want to have a godly experience with you. God, I'm tired of being strong. I'm tired of discipline. I want transformation. I want transformation. In my weakness, I want you to be light. In my dark times, I want your light to come in. For you alone have the power to heal and to save. You alone, God, has the power to transform our lives. God, we are vessels of clay today. But we rely on you, living God for your compassions and your mercy. Say, God, I'm tired of working hard to be a Christian. I'm tired of pretending everything is okay. I'm bringing my brokenness to you, God. going to worship on this song and those who need prayer you're going to come in front and we're going to pray with you you are a child of God whether you're good or bad if you have given Christ in your heart he welcomes you into his family he says you are my child he says he's not ashamed to call you a brother and sister and to tell you all the wonders of his Father in heaven. For all who believe, he gave them the power to become children of God. Not on the plan of men, but it was God's desire to Christ Jesus. So that we can find healing and restoration, we can find our way home. Today I want you to come back home fully with your heart. I want you to come and remove every walls that have separated you from intimacy with your father who loves you. Today said he's okay with you. He's okay with where you are. And he's okay with who you are. Because he is the God who has the power to change and transform. His desire is always an invitation to come and to sit and talk with you. He's not a God who just want to be worshipped. He's a God who wants his children to come to him in awe and adoration. And to discuss and talk and have a real talk with him. A real talk about their life, a real talk about their situation. A real talk about their fears and concerns. God say, as long as you keep coming. I'll work with you and I'll show you my ways. Just keep coming. Keep coming home. We're going to worship on this song. I am a child and if you feel you need prayer because you're dealing with guilt and condemnation no and shame, I want you to come and we're going to pray with you. If you feel like God has forgotten you, I am that you don't
Lord, feel his love and his embrace. I want you to come in front. We're going to pray with you. If you're in a place, you're going through a tough time. Financially, family-wise. And the struggles are real. I want you to come in front. And we'll pray and minister love. God say, heaven's kiss is waiting on you. A slave Come on, to let's sin. worship. I am a child of God. I want you to say that sin. I'm no longer.